This video sponsor is Trade Coffee. Hey YouTube, we live in a confusing world. Even though we've built systems and developed technology and done other stuff to make our lives better, it doesn't seem like the world is getting any simpler. Luckily, it's also never been easier to navigate these overwhelming times. All you have to do is hop over to your favorite website and you're bound to find some good advice, right? Okay, yeah. Oh, oh, that's, that's good to know. Uh, I guess I'll check that one out later. Nice. Sometimes it seems like every answer only leads to more questions. The only way to make money online is to stop watching how to make money online videos. Because if you're watching how to make money online videos, you're not creating how to make money online videos. And if you're not creating how to make money online videos, you really know how to make money online. I don't know, does that make sense? It should. But maybe that's because your questions just aren't specific enough. Maybe what you really need is a teacher who can help you realize that what you're really asking for is, uh, is some help. You're, you're asking for some help. Enter HBO's How To with John Wilson. Hey, New York. From the title, you might think that this show is about finding the answers to questions, to learn how to do some discrete task, from cleaning your ears to being spontaneous to investing in real estate. But, uh, the show doesn't really do that at all. Almost as immediately as John introduces his topic, his tutorials veer completely off the rails, leading you on a path so winding that an episode about small talk can contain some heavy confessions to a complete stranger. My, fr my friend just killed himself before I came here. Before you came here? Well, about 30 days before. An episode about finding a parking spot introduces us to this guy. I've been struck by lightning twice. The first time, I was declared clinically dead for 28 minutes, completely paralyzed for six days, partially paralyzed for seven months, two years to learn to walk and feed myself. And an episode about how to appreciate wine can lead us to the a cappella convention that almost saw John get abducted by the sex cult Nexium. In their eyes, being into a cappella had pre-qualified us for a cult because we were so eager to be accepted. The show feels like John is kind of aimlessly wandering through the world, trying to find the answers to his questions, asking random people on the street and getting distracted by their stories and following that down a totally different rabbit hole. It's kind of like people watching with a licensed professional. You find yourself wondering how it's costing you 30 bucks for a pierogi and a seltzer, and you feel intense regret for agreeing to an equal split. And you begin to wonder, why it always turns out this way. And you enter a dissociative fugue as you yearn for the day when you can finally escape this vessel you call a body. Until you finally snap out of it and throw your friend a dollar. At some point in every single episode, you'll find yourself thinking, wait, what the fuck is this supposed to be about again? The show is called How To but in my tutorials, I don't, you don't really learn much. Oh my God, sorry. I don't really teach you anything. But that's not totally true. These tutorials are strange, surreal, and seemingly random, but in his own way, John Wilson is teaching us far more than you might guess. As John digs for answers, he often ends up clarifying the root of the question at hand, teaching us a different way to look at the world and helping us learn to navigate our own confusing environment without having to head over to Google every 10 seconds. Just, so stick with me and I'll show you how to watch how to with, with John Wilson. How to watch how to, how to, how to, how to. How To with John Wilson is as much about howing to as it is about Johnning Wilson. So just who is this John Wilson guy anyway? You may have noticed that he's, uh, kind of different. I've also been writing down every single thing I do every single day for over a decade now. He's the kind of guy who stands out in a crowd while also blending completely into the background. And his tutorials are filled with moments of intimate vulnerability combined with, um, this. When I make love, I barely make a sound. While How To employs a number of producers, writers, and crew to assist John, he estimates that about 75% of the show's footage was personally shot by him. He brings his camera 
everywhere, filming everything, and even shot over 1,000 hours for season 2's measly three-hour runtime. In fact, he told the New York Times that his pre-pandemic footage is likely one of the most comprehensive archives of what New York looked like right before it changed forever. And from that endless footage, he creates collages out of things he's noticed on the streets of New York City that often go willfully ignored by the bustling crowds. The beauty of the show is that you can just take, um, you know, just the most perplexing, interesting part of a clip um, and, you know, just drop it into the middle of a larger collage and it just takes on a whole new meaning and, and you, you never really know kind of where it begins or ends. And it's in the edit that the show really shines, laying out connections in montage that you never see coming. Here he is trying out a memorization technique called a memory palace, where you visualize the things you want to remember in a familiar space. So I tried to use it to remember my uh, grocery store list. Uh, I'm reminded that I need to buy some broccoli. I also need drumsticks and some breasts, chicken breasts. I also needed uh, uh, some grapes and uh, Snickers bar. This attention, or maybe rather fixation on small details, is a key part of Wilson's perspective, and one that was formed in no small part because of the first job he got out of film school. My first job out of college was actually working for a private investigator. I had to comb through hours and hours of the most banal footage you can imagine and try to find one little incriminating moment. It really trained me to notice little details. I think this show was kind of born out of that. Wilson also has an incredibly dry and deadpan sense of humor in the face of absurdity, and it's not hard to see the similarities between him and one of the show's executive producers, Nathan Fielder. John's really good at discovering things that you would probably normally ignore or just walk by, but when you're really forced to look at it, it really makes you think about how confusing uh, modern life is, I think. But John isn't some Fielder wannabe. He's been making these how-to videos on his Vimeo channel for a decade. He even followed the Talking Heads' David Byrne on tour and made a documentary about it. Although, like most of his work, the documentary quickly spiraled into other topics, like anxieties about John's lack of job opportunities and a nearby prison break. David Sweat and Richard Matt were serving life sentences in the Clinton Correctional Facility. As he told The Guardian, I gravitate towards the uncomfortable. And that's what he does. But picture, um, of course, without clothes, because like I said, he was a nudist. And uh, that's the time he came in with the blindfold. He used a whip on me. And um, he, he edged me while I was blindfolded and then just walk away. And um, session lasted about two hours. And then he did finish me off and I squirted all over the floor. The contrast between absurd subject matter and Wilson's normal guy affect is a big source of humor on the show. There's no fancy camera equipment, there's no crew, it's just John and his subject and a camera. It gives the distinct impression of found footage, that he was just walking around and just whipped out his camera when he saw a woman stuffing a bird into a Dwayne Reed bag. Many of the funniest moments from the show come from John's very simple editing style, where he narrates over his footage, often creating a pun or connection that you didn't see coming. Maybe the reason everyone is at each other's throats in New York is because of all the toxic stuff we're exposed to. You have had a bad headache recently. You're also pretty sure your hairline is receding and <clears throat> you've been feeling a bit more short-tempered. When I was in film school, we learned about how you can change the meaning of a shot by the shots you put before and after it. It's called the Kuleshov effect. It's an editing exercise where you edit shots next to a blank expression. Viewers will then project emotions they think that person is feeling onto the face, even though it's just stock footage. Here's someone a lot smarter than me saying it, saying, saying that better. The perception on the part of the audience is that the face takes on the implications of reaction, the neutral expression looking sad or hungry or worried in turn following the war, food, and child. The meaning is created not from either the A shot or the B shot, it is created from the juxtaposition of the two. Thank you, Dan. I loved you and line goes up. Now what John Wilson is doing isn't exactly that. But the basic idea, leading our brains to connect two seemingly unrelated ideas into one, 
is very much the driving force in How To. Sharing your most intimate thoughts with someone can be a disturbing and messy experience. You're trusting them to take on the full weight of all your problems and handle them with care. And who knows what they'll do once they finally get home and begin to run the forensics on everything you said. Still, the show wouldn't work without footage that raises an eyebrow. And more importantly, people who raise both of your eyebrows. Clean off your skull. It was a memoir written by a personal trainer who discovered that a former client of his became one of the 9-11 hijackers. I mean, how did, it, how did it make you feel when you found out what they did? Uh, made me feel proud. Made me feel good that I, that I changed somebody for something committed that they were able to pull off. Oh. People will share intimate details about their life with John, despite obviously knowing they're on camera and with a complete stranger. I used to be a police officer. I know what that means. How do you mean? Well, sometimes you gotta fake some things because if you don't, it could turn into a worse situation than what you have. Perhaps it's because of his unassuming demeanor, but Wilson is able to get into places he has no business being, listening to people who seem all too ready to tell him just about anything, so long as he's rolling the camera and listening. Uh, unfortunately, I've had the experience at working at major university hospitals and also at my municipality that folks have jumped and committed suicide from the parking garages, and I've experienced it more times than I would like to admit. As Wilson told the New York Times, you can tell immediately if someone wants to be recorded or not. And in that moment when they give you an inch and you continue talking to them and you raise the camera a little higher, a little higher, you begin to realize that, oh my God, so many people have a story. This man had spent over an hour showing a complete stranger every inch of his private life, all while missing his own wife's birthday party. Crucially, the show rarely feels like John is making fun of his subjects. Just documenting them. He never seems to cringe or laugh, even when they show him their foreskin regrowing machine. So with the pulley, uh, I can move any old way while I'm sleeping, doing things involuntarily, and the tension stays the same. We all know that cameras tend to change the energy in a room, and people tend to act differently if they know they're on TV. People also tend to accept strange behavior in the presence of a camera, since they assume it's all a performance. For many, the presence of a camera seems to be all the license they need to let loose. I don't know how I look, but most people will never expect that I'm a sex offender. Wilson has said in interviews that he's followed people for entire days before they even ask what it's for. This isn't exactly a new idea. It's kind of the building blocks of Nathan Fielder's other shows, Nathan For You and The Rehearsal. Almost immediately, I felt a rush of excitement come over me when I remembered there were cameras filming me. HBO cameras. But the way Wilson does it changes the equation slightly. John is all about removing artifice, having a direct relationship with the people he's filming, and not trying to pretend there's not a camera because, like, I mean, yeah, there's, it's right, there's, it's right here. But there's also an element that people don't really believe that this footage is going anywhere because, like, I mean, what kind of show is this, anyways? Like, uh, it's kind of like. Uh memoir, uh, essay, um, it, it takes place in New York. Some people can't seem to wrap their heads around the idea that John is making a show for HBO. And that includes uh, HBO. They don't, they don't seem to know that it's a show either. And it turns out that HBO doesn't even have you on their list for their after party. Yes, I unfortunately do not have you here. Okay. Um, but that anonymity is central. John is existing in the liminal spaces between people in New York City, in glitches in the Matrix. There's a kind of hyper-reality to the show, the sense that the reality that John's showing us could not possibly be real, right? Like, this, that can't, that's not real, right? Another strange thing about the flip-flops is all evidence of the flip disappears after the flop. It's a style that both makes what's happening more believable and also makes it feel as if you could do the same thing. 
if only you could open your eyes in the same way. I mean, I feel like the most inspiring stuff to me growing up was the stuff that looked like I could have made it, you know, or it felt achievable. That's the stuff that is just, it's, it's like the most raw kind of like, you know, like that's the first thing to come out when you try to make the thing. And I, I think there's something really special about that. And for me, it's precisely that kind of accessibility that makes the show magic. Wilson's work isn't made with high production value. Unlike man on the street interview shows, he isn't on camera. And if any celebrities make a cameo, they probably are pretty unaware. They, they probably don't even know that they're on the show. But by forcing us to actually look at the mundane for a long enough time, it starts to look like art, which I guess it kind of is. Like an unironic American beauty scene that asks us, you seeing this? Oh, no one's gonna believe I saw this. What are you chewing at? Did they pick your scabs? Well, either they do it or I do it. It doesn't matter, I pick them too. You're covered in blood. It's difficult to separate the show completely from COVID-19, both because the show explicitly talks about it and because of how it changed the fabric of New York City. These people may not realize it, but they're eating in one of the most coveted pieces of real estate in the whole city. And I think it kind of embodies this feeling that a lot of us had. Confronted with the empty streets and unprecedented solitude, many of us became hyper aware of our immediate surroundings. We were forced to slow down our lives and notice the mundane things we'd always taken for granted and the artificial things that we'd accepted as just the way things are. How to teaches us not really how to accomplish tasks or learn new skills, but instead teaches us a new way to look at the world, to see it as full of weird wonder that exists just beyond that door, just around that corner, just inside someone else's mind. Everyone has a story to tell, and John's deadpan way of moving through the world and juxtaposing things makes sure that no story is really too small. Something that you thought that you only noticed and it was a personal struggle of your, like a tiny little personal struggle of yours is like shared by another person. Even if it's, even if you knew that that was probably true, hearing it and seeing it represented is, is like, just the most boring stuff is just, I feel like, underrepresented. And, and that's the stuff that makes us who we are. That's the stuff that fills every single day. The show teaches us how to listen to the world and people around us, to take a second look at things we thought we understood, and to look for the deeper questions that we're really asking underneath it all. How to isn't teaching you about anything in particular. It's teaching you how to go about learning in the first place. But I don't know, maybe that sounds kind of pretentious to you. Maybe you don't need to understand the deeper metaphysical implications of your questions. Maybe you, you just want to figure out how to make better coffee. Well, don't worry, you're still in luck because of this video sponsor, Trade Coffee. Trade Coffee is a service that brings you a remarkable selection of over 450 different coffees and delivers them direct to your door. Even if you know nothing about coffee at all, they use a matching algorithm to tailor deliveries to your unique tastes. Trade will introduce you to new indie roasters and ship your beans out within 48 hours of being roasted. Those beans will be fresh, both because they were just roasted and because they're new to you. It's a it's a pun. Right now, Trade is offering a free bag of coffee with any drink subscription at drinktrade.com slash skip intro. That's drinktrade.com slash skip intro for a free bag of coffee with any subscription purchase. Upgrade your morning routine with better coffee. And if you're still watching, thank you. This was a video that was very hard to make. It's very hard to write about a show that is so hard to describe, but um, I really wanted to give it its flowers because it's been one of the best shows on TV for the last three years, and I rarely see anybody talking about it, and I thought that I would do that. Also was watching a bunch of TV for my next video, which is gonna be another Copaganda episode on Veronica Mars. It, it's gonna be about private investigators and sheriffs and all that good stuff. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, you can support the channel by going over to Patreon. That helps the most with these long-term research projects. You also get access to things like monthly roundups and mailbags and my second channel called Lil Skippies that is uh, only available for those on Patreon. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you check out How To with John Wilson, because it's great. Talk at you again next time.